Well, hello, aloha, welcome back. I am Fleur, the face behind Aloha Monday Teaching. Um, today, we are talking all about team building in the science classroom and why it's important. So um, if we haven't met yet, like I said, I'm Fleur, and I help middle school science teachers like you and me, yes, me too, I help myself, um, to be more intentional in our classrooms, prepared and refreshed so that we're ready for Monday and any day, and we are our best for our students. All right, so anything I mention, like links, books, resources, anything related to this topic will be listed in the description below. So be sure to check that out later on, okay? Um, so this is based on the blog post for team building activities in a classroom and their importance. So as you know, during school, um, it's important for us to incorporate team building activities into our classrooms. And that goes for science, especially because most of the things that we do will, will require collaboration. Um, so also team building is one of the biggest parts of building a community, like that safe and positive classroom community that we want. So today we're gonna explore why it's important um, and what team building activities um, are useful in the classroom. All right, so we will first go over why we need to incorporate team building and then four types of team building activities and just some examples that go with it. All right, so why is team building important? Well, have, I don't know if you've heard of the four C's of 21st century learning, but that is, um, so the four C's, there's collaboration, creativity, critical thinking, and communication. And it's just what we can think about in science class when we're doing really anything, labs, just discussion, projects, STEM, all of that. So those are four things that students, those are kind of skills that they need. Um, also, as you know, we've, most states, we're using science and engineering practices, which require collaboration and communication. So those two pieces from the four C's. And so team building, supports those. And finally, when we are doing team building activities, it can increase dopamine in the brain, which are those positive like endorphins that give students that sense of belonging and value in our classrooms. And especially when we do fun things, then, you know, that is also what increases dopamine in the brain, laughing, all that. Okay. All right, so here are four types that we are going to go over. Um, but first, so there's lots, lots of different things you can do. I want to go over this first really quick. Um, so at the beginning of the year, when you're doing team building activities, you want to make sure that it's like non-threatening, it's safe as the students are getting to know each other. Um, so nothing really at high stakes for the kids. Um, and then as the year goes on, you can add more of the competition, activities that require more collaboration and communication that, that they have to have to be successful in that task. Um, I wish I had a video of this. I don't know where it is, but I have shared. This was a couple of years ago when the Summer Olympics were taking place, and we did a seventh grade Psy Olympics challenge. It was so much fun. So both science classes, we did this with each of our classes, and we um, incorporated a variety of activities that built on different students' strengths as they got to know each other. So some of the things we did were some simple STEM challenges. We did an escape room a science categories game, kind of like categories, um, use their lab safety test class averages on um, to earn medals for each class. So those are just some, just some ideas and how you can use them, but they can be done anytime. It's just not just at the beginning of the school year and you can adapt the activities to fit the curriculum. So it can, you can tie it into what you're teaching, which would be really useful, right? So the four types that I want to quickly go over are cooperative learning types of activities, morning meeting activities. Those two are really the sources that they come from. Um, and I'll explain that in a moment. The third thing could be like um, STEM challenges or science experiments, simple ones, and then using games as team building. So for cooperative learning, you if you've read or seen other videos 
of mine. I talk about cooperative learning quite a bit. Um, it's just a really great classroom strategy, like a classroom management strategy. It's a good way to teach kids how to work together. And um, these all come from Kagan's cooperative learning is where I learned it from in a training. So these activities, this is the team building book. Um, but the activities in Kagan's Cooperative Learning focus on team building and working together and celebrating and all of that. So those are things um, you can use from those books. One that I remember using, it's called something so simple called Match Mine. And I did it with manipulatives, but you can just, they can draw. So you have students facing each other. Okay. So here's this person right here. And you have like a file folder or privacy folder separating you so you can't see what the other is doing. So one person will like draw a picture or make a design with manipulatives or something. Then they're going to explain the steps to the student without them seeing. And then they have to see if they can get the same design or drawing. It's cool. Um, but there's a lot. There's a lot of other things in there. Morning meeting activities. So this, um, if you haven't seen this book yet, it's the morning meeting book. And I love this book. And there is a whole section just for middle school. If you're interested in class, like not class meetings, but this kind of stuff, um, I highly recommend this book. Even for middle school, there's a whole chapter just for middle school. And at the back are the activities that you can do. So these activities, they're, they, you know, they require teamwork, even just partner work, but they require some team building. They fit, um, they, sorry, they adapt easily to your curriculum. So you can use the activities and just modify it so it's to fit what you're teaching. So some examples that you could do are a scavenger hunt. This one's so easy, like where they list words, like three letter or more words using the letters and the words team building or organelles or whatever you're teaching, okay? Plate tectonics. Ooh, I should do that. That's what we're doing next. So um, that is one example there. Another type of activity. So this is the third we did. Um, so the first was cooperative learning. The second was morning meeting kind of activities. Okay, the third, you can do STEM challenges or simple science experiments. Those work great as team building activities. So this is just one that I have. Um, this one takes a couple days to do, but it's a good team building thing for STEM or the engineering design process. Other STEM challenges, these we've done in staff meetings or um, professional development, and these would be so much fun for students too. Okay, and you've probably heard of these. So the first one is like the red solo cup where you stack it. I don't even know the name of this activity, but you have a rubber band and you tie strings. So you're working together by pulling your string so that the rubber band can grab a cup and then you stack it. So there's a lot of communication that goes in this. It's so much fun. Um, so that is one STEM challenge you can do with your kids. I guess it's not really STEM, there's not math in it. But um, anyhow, so that is a team building activity that you can do. Another one, we did this in a professional development. So the lady gave us like two pieces of construction paper, some cardstock, scissors, and masking tape, like a certain amount of masking tape. First, we brainstormed problems in our state. So some problems that a lot of us came up with were, the, were in Arizona. So the extreme heat and lack of water, that kind of stuff. So my partner and I, we focused on the water. And so we constructed this like tower with a con condensation catcher thing so that we could collect from up in the atmosphere, like the clouds, we could collect water and then it would go into a tank. Um, so you could do that with your students too, and they could just build something. And you can also use different science experiments. And I'm linking below um, to my friend, Amanda from the, she's the sci-ed teacher. She has some um, simple science experiments that you can do with your students as team building. And finally, the fourth thing you can do for team building is actually playing games. Um, students get competitive, but they're having fun. And there's a lot of different kinds of games you can play with your students. So I'm just going to share one. Um, this is a review game. I This is the cell theory one, but I call these show what you know about and then whatever the topic is. So I have a few in my store. I've got the link below. And the kids have so much fun with this. And it is a good team building thing. Another 
great game type of activity you can do for team building is um, escape rooms. So we've used Kessler's escape rooms. Um, my friend Amanda from SciEd, she has some escape rooms. So I'll link all those below too, because those are a lot of fun. All right, so we talked about why team building is important. Um, it's important because we need to have our students feel safe, valued, engaged, and they, that they belong in our classes. And it also goes with the four C's of 21st century learning, collaboration, creativity, critical thinking, and communication. Um, and then we also talked about four different types of activities that you can do throughout the school year, not just at the beginning. And those include some kind of like cooperative learning activities from using Kagan as a resource, morning meeting activities from the responsive classroom, that book I showed you, using some STEM challenges or just easy science experiments or by playing games. All right, so it is your turn. Uh, what are some ways that you use team building in your classroom and what new ideas do you have that you would like to try? Please comment below and let me know. I would love to hear from you. And then remember to like and subscribe so that you can you know, get notifications and all that. And here are some more videos that you may find um, useful in your science classroom. All right, thank you.